Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now, can a mid-range graphics card as part of a mid-range system keep up with or even outperform a high-end beast like the RTX 4090? Now, the answer to that is, of course, no, in a like-for-like -like comparison. Furthermore, don't go thinking this is a cloud gaming video because it isn't. Today, I wanted to do something a little bit different. This is one of those ideas where I sort of woke up and thought, shall I make this video or not? And ultimately decided to do so. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to ignore everything as far as visuals and graphical quality is concerned. All we're going to do is focus on matching the performance figures of the RTX 4090 when using a lower end or mid range card like my 3050 here. We're going to be doing that by making any sacrifice necessary to the graphical quality. We're going to be turning things down, enabling FSR, enabling DLSS, and generally making the games look horrible in order to try and keep up with NVIDIA's super high-end GPU. So without further ado, I should probably get this on the table. I don't have a 4090, so I've borrowed some results from Tech Power Up. They're my sort of go-to source for reviews these days. I'm going to put the figures up on screen that we're going to be trying to hit with the mid-range 3050. Now this is the 4090 pretty much at its best at 1080p with the highest settings of course and this is going to be quite challenging I think but I do believe with a bit of tweaking and by a bit I mean a lot we can hit these figures with the 3050. Why? Well there wouldn't be the word random in the title of this channel if it wasn't just that. So let's get into it and see what sort of mess we can make of the visuals of some of the latest and greatest games. It's important to remember that not only are we using a far weaker card today, but also a far more modest system. My 3050 is paired with an i5-12400F and 16 gigs of 3200MHz DDR4, making this task even more challenging and the visual destruction all the more intense. I'm working with a small selection of games too, so results can and will vary on a system by system and game by game basis. Not to mention my benchmarking runs are probably completely different as well. Still, this is hardly a serious, scientifically accurate concept to begin with, so let's get into it and have a a bit of fun. In Marvel Spider-Man Remastered, the MSI 4090, according to the Tech Power Up review, can run this in combination with an i9 at 188.4 FPS at 1080p. If we want 188.4 FPS with my mid-range i5 and 3050 system, what do we have to do? Well, first of all, we need 900p resolution as a starting point. We also need the lowest settings and FSR 2.1 enabled. This will give us better performance than Nvidia's DLSS as well as Intel's XESS. To summarise on the settings then, this is basically upscaled 900p with the most aggressive FSR preset enabled. We are definitely not matching the 4090 on visuals, of course that was never the intention, but are we matching the 4090 and Core i9 of course at performance? Well by coincidence, and I didn't check this until typing up the script, we are hitting exactly 188 FPS on average. Kicking things off then, and in Spider-Man Remastered, we need the lowest settings at upscaled 900p to match the performance of an enthusiast 4090 gaming rig. Surprisingly though, this game still looks somewhat decent with these settings. In Red Dead Redemption 2, you may be wondering why I've stuck with 1080p and kept DLSS or FSR off in favour of a reduced render resolution of 50% instead. Well, the truth is, with this 3050 and i5 system, the CPU becomes more of a limitation, and 180 or so FPS becomes the sort of peak frame rate that this system can achieve. That said, the average is a lot less. Because the 12400F became the limiting factor with everything reduced, I was even able to enable TAA without as much as a performance hiccup. The frame rate sat anywhere from between, let's say, 195 all the way down to around 120, but the figures, the exact figures, will be on screen. Nowhere near the 200 FPS that an ultra high end 4090 system can achieve, even when we turn Red Dead into mud. Again, this is all for fun, and you can actually make the game run at well over 60 with this setup using some pretty decent settings. 
that is of course what I'd recommend you actually do for real world gameplay. Next up we have Forza Horizon 5 where an i9 and 4090 can hit just shy of 188 FPS at 1080p. How does the 3050 then compare? Well, it can actually do the same at very low. I didn't enable any upscaling here and I was even able to keep TAA enabled as well for a plus 200 FPS average. There were definitely a few performance drops as I raced through busier towns and entering races gave us an overall lower performance metric than just driving around the open world. This is really an excellent example of optimization though and again while you could certainly enjoy at least 60 FPS with high or ultra settings on a PC like this one, if for some reason you want to match the performance of a 4090 rig, you can do with significantly reduced visuals. These lower faults of presets do look noticeably worse than even the medium one to be honest, but I'm glad they're included because it means that owners of more entry level hardware can enjoy this game as well. Finally we have Cyberpunk 2077 and I thought for sure this one would be the game to fall shortest of that target frame rate. With our mid range i5 and 3050 system I opted for 720p low with ultra performance DLSS. We're essentially upscaling to 720p here from a very low resolution in combination with the lowest settings. A top tier 4090 PC will manage over 160 FPS but can our modest rig even come close? Well jumping into the game, and yes there will be instances where that frame rate shoots up towards 200 but at what cost? It's definitely not as hard on the eyes as a lower than 720p native and from my initial testing I found that DLSS and FSR performed basically the same whereas enabling dynamic resolution scaling from the options menu and setting that to the most aggressive with a target of 240 didn't really exceed 140. We're definitely CPU bound here now though. Now your best bet at coming close to 4090 performance with a system like this is with DLSS or FSR and 720p in Cyberpunk. Is it worth doing? Definitely not. But it has been interesting to see how things fared even in this small sample of games. Some titles will need a huge visual sacrifice to get i9 and 4090 like performance whereas others won't. It might be worth trying for yourself if not just for a bit of fun. In the end it could be other components like the processor, perhaps RAM, that leave you limited. I hope you enjoyed watching this silly video because I certainly had fun making it. If you did, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.